Intimacy is to be intimate with all your parts. Enlightenment is intimacy with all your parts. It's not just to know the parts, it's to bring the parts together in a new configuration of intimacy in which a new whole emerges that's greater than the sum of the previous parts. So it's like bringing together hydrogen and oxygen. Neither of them are liquid at room temperature, but when you bring them together, voila, water. When you bring your parts together through seeing them, that which becomes invisible, the prism which was invisible to you, which kept you in prison, now you can see it. You see the parts that were invisible, that were split off. If we can borrow the phrase of Harvard theorist Robert Keegan, subject becomes object, meaning that which is subject, meaning it's in you, but invisible even to you, you now can see it, it becomes object, you put it on the table, now you can work with it. Now you see that part, which actually had the steering wheel of your life, now you can see it, and now you can reconfigure the parts in order to have a new emergent whole, which is a new configuration of intimacy, which is a new whole self. So a key part of that process of becoming homo more and more is to do the work and identify those invisible parts, AKA, right, the sentence, the false framework sentence that you were generating reality from within, Oscar Chazo's brilliant insight, and then bring it together with all your other parts and reconfigure a new emergence. Rewrite your sentence as unique self. You can't, however, skip a step. And the step you can't skip is the step of true self. So you have, if we want to kind of look at it for a second, I'm born. When I'm born, I'm pre-personal. Before there's a self. Reality births me. However you want to tell that story. The unmanifest, infinity. I come from nowhere. Here I am. It's not just from the sperm and egg of the parents. The sperm and egg of the parents are part of this larger vibrating field of allurement and reality. Right Here I am. When I emerge into the world, I'm not individuated. I'm not separate from the larger. I'm part of the ocean. I'm a wave in the ocean, but I'm not even aware that I'm a wave. And I'm not separate from the mother. I'm not separate from the environment. I'm what we might call pre-personal. Which is why, by the way, when the romantic poets talk about, let's go back to the beautiful innocence of a baby, well, I don't think so. You know, babies are, are, are gorgeously cute and innocent, but they're not good, true, and beautiful. They're not wise. They're not homo amor, right? Babies come with trailing clouds of glory, as the poet said. That's the beginning of the story, right, in this field of life. So the baby's born, the baby's pre-personal. We're madly in love with the baby, but now the baby has to emerge. What Margaret Maller called psychological birth, right? I'm, I'm birthing, and then I separate, and that's healthy. I have to separate, individuate. I become separate self. But then my separate self gets distorted. That's false self. And more particularly, then my separate self gets distorted because I begin living my separate self from within my false core framework sentence. So if you can imagine it as follows, your separate self is a puzzle piece. It's a puzzle piece. The puzzle piece is independent, and yet it yearns to complete the larger puzzle. But society tells it, you're crazy, you think there's a larger puzzle? Maybe you can go to therapy and work that out. Oh, maybe you could do some gestalt work. Maybe you could do some psychoanalysis. Oh, you know what, let's medicate you. Some opioids, maybe a little Xanax will help. Ah, maybe you wanna take a little Adderall, that might, might help you do better, right? And that's why we have an opioid crisis because there's this incohate yearning in us that we don't know how to fill and how to address. And so the puzzle piece yearns for, right, this larger sense of belonging, and yet the puzzle piece doesn't know where to find the rest of the puzzle. 
And the puzzle piece feels the, the pain and the shock of, of, of alienation. And so the puzzle piece has to explain very early on to itself why it's this way. And that's where the false core framework sentence comes from. So the puzzle piece, right, the separate self, right, becomes the false self, which is the part of our personality that's overlaying the false core framework. Now, try and walk around like a distorted puzzle piece, right? Separate self, false self is not easy, right? You're kind of like, right, it doesn't quite work. And so I, I then need to go to the next level of realization, which we might call true self. True self is a name used by many of the great traditions. And true self means the realization, I'm not separate from everything. Right, Albert Einstein, right, said, Separation is an optical delusion of consciousness. And the great masters of every tradition understood that actually it's not homo deus, that is to say, the human being who biohacks their way right, to an elitist semi-immortality, leaving everyone else behind. Deus actually means divine. I'm not separate from the divinity which is, however you want to tell that story, which is the larger field of a living, pulsating reality. So we, we're not going to tell the story in the same framework of the old religions. We'll tell the story in the framework of the new emergent, the interior and exterior sciences coming together, the realization that actually tatvam ase, as they said in Sanskrit, thou art that. You are inseparable from the larger field of the one that lives gorgeously in you, as you, and through you. That's true self. Now the total number of true selves in the world is one. One true self. But true self doesn't efface my individuality. It doesn't efface my gorgeous expression, my unique self. True self is the realization that I'm ultimately not separate. That separation is actually a myth. It's actually not true. That realization of true self is, is stunningly important. It's when I actually realize I'm part of the larger field. Sometimes when laughter ripples across a room, right, the room just begins, everyone's just laughing. People are feeling good and, and expanded because laughter discloses the inherent intimacy of reality. I actually realize, no, we're, we're all part of this together. I get a glimpse, a fragrance of true self.